in a universe where life does not end at death. We explore the infinite possibilities forged by our very minds. Welcome to our Thedian Anthologies. Before we get started, I just want to inform you that this series was recorded over Discord. If the quality dips, it's due to connection issues. Greetings, fellow travelers and storytellers. Welcome to a Reborn in Power series featuring Dr. Cal and his creation. Proto. Follow along as he learns how to live and survive beyond the confines of the Zelic dynasty. Dr. Cal, you are outside of TL Frameworks, massive dome on the surface of Vicronix. You just left meeting with an individual known as Marmaduke, someone who was right underneath well, what you know to be T.L., the head scientist and well, CEO of T.L. Frameworks, obviously. <laughs> you left with some information, a new codex, and you are sitting outside... You see the long line stretching across the dome, the, the outside of the, of the dome. You see people walking up to it. You see some pods flying overhead and going um, around. You just messaged Asla about picking you up. She does respond back, saying that she will be right over as soon as they are done eating. Oh, right. They went out to eat. Yeah. This is a bit quicker than you expected. Uh, yeah, I didn't ask a lot of questions. I you just did not ask it. a lot of questions. Well, I had a lot of questions, but they, they explained pretty fast that, no, these are all intended side effects. So I was like, oh. That's my main question. Those didn't seem like intended side effects. So I guess... So, I guess it's time to open up the TL code. code. You're going to open it up? Might as well, right? All right. You, uh, you pull out the casing. You see the casing is a nice... Uh, it's almost like a, a glistening black and, and silver metallic on it and it has like TL ingrained into the the casing as you go and open it up it transforms out of it and then goes straight into a codex as you open it up and it glows white and then it reads welcome Dr. Cal and then it scans your face and as it scans your face, it begins to open up several different uh, applications, and then it begins to uh, ask you a bunch of questions. The first quest question it asks you is, what is the purpose of this codex? Ooh. 
serious. It is. <laughs> I didn't know it would do this. Um, and he just kind of like puts down research. Just types research. Okay. Research and engineering. Okay, research and engineering. You type in that that, and then another question pops up. Is like, perfect. What research will you be doing? Dr. Callie, he, he, he takes a minute to think about what proto counts as <laughs> as a research, and he's like, um, augmentation, bio, biology, and computer. I guess that would be the right word. <laughs> Mechanical, computer, and biology. Would be. All right, you you uh, type that in it's like perfect what kind of engineering will you be focusing on Dr. Cal just writes down uh, computer engineering computer engineering okay perfect generating codex entries that will feature computer engineering and and bio- biological and enha- en- enhancements of of uh Com, uh, computer data, and then you see <laughs> multiple different entries begin to begin to kind of scroll through, almost like you know when you know when you go on your phone and you have all your apps open, and then you go and and check all all the apps that are open, and you scroll through them. It's almost like that, and oh, it's like man. choose, and, and then it, and then it says choose the ones that you that you would most like to see. <sighs> I'm getting, I'm getting like, when I first opened up Spotify, vibes. <laughs> um, uh, it, this, this is different than any codex that, you, that you've you've ever seen because it, oh, yeah, it's because never it's never prompted you not with questions. Internet. Yeah, and and yeah. <laughs> and all, all the information <laughs> popping up. It's it's Doctor Cal. It's novel. Has this like. As this goes on, Dr. Cal just gets more and more of a smile on his face. Because he's like, ooh, there he is. This is what the future holds. Interesting. And he just kind of, like, reads through them. Okay. Like, glancing over them, mostly. And he would be picking out things mainly about neurological implants. Okay, please, uh, please roll me a... Coding be the right word for this? No, no. I would I would say perception with intellect. Perception with intellect. Yeah. I'm pretty good at perception and intellect. And <laughs> That's a pretty low roll, but it'll still be high once I add all the modifiers. Twenty two. Twenty two. Okay, as you begin to scroll through these and and, and you're kinda like reading through them. As you're as you're searching through them, uh, you begin to pick, to pick out uh, certain certain entries that pop up that pique your interest. Uh, some that are focused on uh, enhancement capabilities for Kron specifically, or or even for those who who uh, who are injured in in battles and require enhancement surgery. Um, you also find, uh, you also find entries on, on transferring biolog, uh, bio-conscious minds over to sin frames and, and the transference process of, and of how that works. Uh, you also, you also find different articles on, on biological factors, uh, across the species, the the main like the main uh criminoid species like species group um and you also you also find that there is uh some that actually specify how to how to craft certain like sin parts that are that are important to an actual frame itself. I'm going to guess most of these are about everything besides the core. 
Uh, no, like there, core. there are there are different kinds of cores that you can that you can develop for for sin frames. Uh, it's just the most the most efficient ones require cer- certain materials that are a lot more expensive than your average tech materials, like your your average materials that you that you use for upgrading weapons and stuff. Yeah, because I'm going to guess there's stuff about adaptive cores, like what Proto is. Yeah, because he he would take an interest in that because he he's actually like, wait, what is, what is Proto built up? Is he, he didn't know this too much, it's and not... then uh, as as you pick as you pick out the, these these entries, uh, it says it says, "All right, cataloging all all the entries that you you have chosen." Now, Doctor Cal, one last final question for you, and then you see it it goes blank, and it's like, "Are you more of a centralized or decentralized user?" And then it 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 has it lo- looks like there's a little question mark on on each on each one, and it's and it specifies like it gives you a it gives you a description of what each one will do for you. Okay, so what is a centralized user? Uh, when it opens up, it <laughs> the centralized user it specifies you will have you have direct access to the to the entire archive every single time a an entry is is uploaded it it will go straight into your codex so you so you'll have it it's basically the the internet uh the the centralized user is is this is this is what you will have for your for your tl codex and then when you are looking for new information you have to, you have to go the same route that you would normally go when it comes to other codexes where you have to tap other people's codexes that have certain information, or or tap or or plug into arc archive data, and then transfer certain en- entries into your codex that that is accessible to you. Okay, so here here's the important question for Doctor Cal: Does it take codex you built yourself and send them to the archive if you go centralized? Uh, and so a- entries that you that you write yourself, it, if it is transmitted to an archive or in into a TL codex, it will be put into the larger database for for other people to read. Almost like, yeah, it's, it's basically like you're 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 publishing on the internet. But if you go decentralized, that won't happen. That won't happen. Is there a way to collect more if you go decentralized? Besides tapping other codecs. Uh as you look as you look at this, you see that there is a little uh there there is the box where it says that you can you can type in your answer or even a question. Um okay, then he specifically writes in uh, for the centralized, uh, what happens if I need to get more information besides other codecs? Then I type that. It it calculates that, and then you see it says you must go to an to a specialized ar- archive with the information you seek, or you may switch over to centralized. Oh, so you can switch back and forth. Okay. It doesn't, uh, it, he, it doesn't specify whether or not you can switch back and forth, but it does say you can switch over to centralized. He goes into centralized for now because he's... Yeah, we, we go decentralized for now. All right, you click decentralized, and then it, uh, it says, Thank you, Dr. Cal. And then you see it begins to... Uh, pop up to your home screen, and it shows all the all the entries that you ha- that you have cataloged inside there, the publishers of those of those specific entries, and uh, you also see what looks like a little another uh, application of some of some kind, 
and it shows TL on on the app on the app itself. I, I click on this TL app. Okay, you. Is that that's curious? Yeah, uh, you click on it, and as you click on it, you see it opens up, and you see uh, the what what looks like a a search bar opens up, and then you also see other different uh, applications that begin to pop up. Um, applications that show maybe uh, it, it shows like a calculator it also shows a, a, a clock a, a calendar uh, it looks like the g- general apps that you that you might get with a with a smartphone interesting uh, and Dr. Cal just kind of he plays with this for a bit and he reads some of the entries that, that he yeah, okay. Uh, I would like you to. Waiting. I like you to roll me a perception check. Oh. And do no. you have do you have talent in in perception? I do not have talent. In okay. Perception. Oh, maybe that doesn't matter. Uh, so, uh, this is going to be a pretty high. Uh, this is a twenty nine. No, sorry. 27. You're lucky you rolled high. I rolled incredibly high. That was, that was a crit. <laughs> yeah, you're lucky you rolled high. <laughs> what, what did I notice, Matt? Um, as you're looking at, at this at this codex, you suddenly feel a, a slight ripple in your head, and it makes you twitch. Your eye sw- uh, switches up, looking away from the, your codex screen, and you see a pod <laughs> land uh, probably about 100 feet away from you, and it looks like it, it, it lands over on the other side of the, the street, over, over by a, a building, and you see two figures step out of the pod, and those figures look uh, well. They they have uh, some uniforms on, and they are Newgonian. Do, Do they have navy navy jumpsuits with the DMOS quartets on the back? You Matt? see, as you, it's hard to tell whether or not they have the sigil itself, but their uniforms look look. Uh, yeah, they. They look like they could be from the demo cortex, yes. Uh, and Dr. Cal tries, like, walking to another area where these guys are. While keeping his eye on them. Okay. Um, I'm going to guess that's probably a stealth. Because he doesn't want to draw their attention. Yes, it's going to be a stealth. Uh, but how am. exactly are you are you stealthing? Are you like literally like stealthing, like trying to like you know hide behind certain things and and hop hop around to different areas so that you don't you you can't be seen, or are you stealthing like you're walking and being all nonchalant and trying to trying to make sure that you know you play the part of just someone who's just walking through the city. I'm going to use the power of being so short compared to everyone else. And hop behind uh, people and, while they're walking. <laughs> basically, yeah. Because that's that's kind of easier for a Newgonian since they're so little. All right. Um, I, then I would like you to roll me a stealth check. I'm going to guess with agility instead of yes, or yes. charm. Exactly. Like you might have made it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the entire reason. 
I was like, nope, nope, nope we're not going to add nonchalant. That's a good way to die. <laughs> um, oh, it's it's one of those days, Matt. Um, 12 plus 11. 23. Hey, you, see? You're, you're rolling really high now all of a sudden, huh? It's it's the white dice making up for its years of abuse. <laughs> As you are hopping around to each of the people, you're you're kind of like just like kind of skipping over and then hiding and skipping over and then hiding. As this occurs, Do I feel any more brain ripples, Matt? You feel a large one come over. uh, And you know that... Well, um... Usually when this is happening, it's it's another Newgonian trying to communicate with another Newgonian. or Or a Newgonian is trying to probe someone. So... Mm, and, and even you, more and, proof that they're probably DMO's Tortex. Yeah, you you know that. Well, the, the a, a Nugonian trying to probe another Nugonian, you can't really do that unless you are you have ascended your probing techniques in some manner, like how some of the demo Cortex have done. Which means not a good sign. And you feel a large ripple, kind of fly through um, as that happens I would like you to roll me a stealth check with intellect please intellect stealth intellect stealth now that's a fun combination right <laughs> okay that's still pretty high uh, 8 20 24 All right, I have talent points. You're able to suppress your your mind to try to like keep it as as low as possible and as as just not not producing any any counter waves to to what they're what they're producing, and you're just kind of allowing them to kind of flow through. I'm submarining my mind. Yes. As this is happening, you you uh, feel, or you you feel someone is beginning to stare over towards you, and you see a what looks like one of the people from the TL. Frameworks standing there. One of the guards that was standing there, his visor is covering his eyes. He's looking over towards you. And you see it's almost like he's he's not he's not moving or anything. He looks completely stoic, but he is his his body is turned in a way that is almost welcoming back inside. Um, as, as Dr. Cal sees this, he's like, that's the best place. (laughs) He's remembering what his God said about not being able to see in there, but like at the same time, (laughs) at the same time, if a God can't see in there, (laughs) if God can't see in there, there's someone else who can. Yeah. Those assholes over there in the black jumpsuits. Uh, and as I like see this, I, I try to make my way over there. Okay, I need you to roll me one more stealth check, please. One more stealth check. Come on, dice. Come on. Oh, that, that worked. <laughs> What's this? Uh, that is a 20. Oh, I nearly did the math wrong. 20. And that's an 11 plus 11, 22. You're able to maneuver over over there really quick. And then you hear, 
you hear a, a, a voice come from behind you. It's like, <gasps> Dr. Cal. And you look over and you see a prime whose eyes kind of have rolled over into the back of their their head for a second and like and say that and then you see them walking over to you as you walk as you rush inside and you rush inside and then you see uh the figure steps forward and then puts his his like crosses his arms and then and then put uh puts his his arm out like stiff arming the, the guy that that's approaching and it's like you are not you are not allowed to enter here And as you Dr. enter Cal inside, kinda, he as soon as he's inside and like a door or something is separating him from whatever is out there, he like goes behind it and he just breathes for a second because <laughs> he's been like half holding his breath. Oh, that that wasn't good. <laughs> you hear? Well, you you see another another guard who steps up. Uh, with a visor, and he and he goes and pre- presses like right by where where his temple is, and the visor <laughs> com- uh, comes apart, and then kind of goes right right into his his temple lobes, um, like almost like an enhancement, and then uh, you see he has he has black black hair that that waves waves over, uh, he has a goatee a, a black goatee, and uh, his eyes are. It almost looks like they they have a like thermal vision in them that, that they they kind of twist and, and turn in their their red eyes, and he looks at you and he says, "Are you alright, Doctor Kell?" Yeah. Doctor Kell like looks over himself. <laughs> He, like, does a mental check just to make sure because he was dealing with mind stuff. Uh, he's like, um, I, I appear to be fine. But they're still out there looking. He just breathes a little, like, thing, and he, like, as the guard's have talking you, to him, he starts pulling out his codex. Have you contacted... Have you talked contacted core command yet, or shall we contact them for you? I I was just about to. Uh, you you can contact them. I'm going to contact the uh, an agent I am with, an officer. Officer of core command. Uh, they're an uh, uh, They they are. Uh, Asla is Asla is a part yeah. of core command. Yes. Well, yeah, but she's an officer specifically, isn't yes. she? Yes, she is. A, she's an officer. You're not exactly sure her uh, her position. I, I, yes, uh, but the, the, those guys being around isn't good even for you guys. <laughs> I guess. Nonsense. We are well taken care of here. That's a relief. Um, as long as he does that, he as long as you have someone to contact, you are safe here. May I ask a question? Of course. Is there a place where I could get a vehicle to pick me up? Like, can if I call a uh, pod? Is there an area where I could? Yes, there is. There are are lifts up, up top, landing platforms. We can escort you there, and then Thank you. you see him look look over fifty six, and then you see another guard l- looks back. It's like, yes, take Doctor Cowl up to one of the landing platforms. Specify to him exactly which landing platform it is, and have the officer that is picking him up land there. Sounds good. Thank you. Right it's to say, right, right this way, Doctor Kell. Uh, and at, he, he's Doctor Kell is like half looking at his codex and half following this guy. You know? Yeah. Uh, and he's he's on the other codex. He's not on the TL one. Um, and he just starts type like texting at 
Ashla, and he's like, hey, change of plans. Um, I need you to pick me up at the landing platform in TL. Wait, so you're texting (laughs) with your TL codex or with your other codex? The other codex. I haven't put numbers over yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I type with the other codex. All right, you type with the other codex, and... I, like, ask the guard which landing platform, and I'm like, hey, when you can, this platform. Okay, yeah, the the uh, the platform is sent, the, the platform number is sent, and you are escorted up to the platform, and you get there, and she specifies that she, she will be there uh, momentarily. Uh, Dr. Cow just, like, types. Uh, no rush. Um, and he just kind of, like, sits onto the wall kind of takes out the TL frameworks codecs again. Okay. And just starts looking through a few more uh, things. Seeing what else is there. Alright, as you, uh, as you begin to look, look through it, you see that on the, on the TL section there is a, a place where it says, um, where it, it specifies TextNet. X. Has Doctor Cal heard of this yet? He he's heard it like he's, in passing. He's heard of it in passing from uh, Marmaduke that you that you met. Marmaduke and I think the cab driver that yes. drove. Yeah, no, the, the cab driver definitely was was talking about. Yeah, it. he he was a big fanboy. Yeah. He was, um, and Doctor Cal, while he's like waiting, he's like, I might as well check this out. All right, and you, he like kind of tries getting on that. You click on it, and then it, it gives you a notification saying, "Sorry, Doctor Cal, you chose decentralized. Would you like to switch over to centralized?" Uh, does it have an answer thing? Yes, it says yes and no. Uh, it's almost well, it's almost it- like. It's almost like when when you open an app and then and then you go to try to like click to take a picture or something or or upload a picture and it says, okay, "Do you want to allow permission for this app to use this thing?" Yeah, yeah. Um, Doctor Cal is like, might as well be my research codex, and he and he posts yes. You click yes, and then all of a sudden it <laughs> shifts over. And then it, it shows TextNet on top of the screen. And then you see a search bar. Uh, when he sees the search bar, he specifically looks into adaptive cores. Because this is a newer thing for Dr. Kill. Okay. Because adaptive cores seem pretty strong, judging by some of the things they were able to do. So you I guess they're quite expensive to make though. You begin to ser- be you begin to ser- search up adaptive cores. Um you search up what looks to be a full catalog of of different scientists that have ex- have theorized ad- adaptive cores and then you see that most of them kind of tie back to one scientist who is named TL. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> and uh, it, it specifies that that adaptive cores is a new form of of sin frame uh, technology. It's meant to kind of pull away from how enhancements work and more so try to try to utilize how how biology is able to adapt to certain out- outcomes and make the sin frame able to adapt so that when tra- uh, biological transference happens instead of having to like calibrate enhancements you're actually just upgrading yourself through a- a- adapting to certain scenarios uh, as Dr. Cal like reading on this like a thing he thinks to himself is like oh they're making a quantum brain it's no longer our computer it's Brain. It's more like the only way I can think about it is, you know, like a character as a player is like it, it sounds more like what's what's the word for that type of 
it, it's more actual AI instead of just machine learning, basically. Mm-hmm. Like the difference between machine learning and actual AI, whereas AI can actually like adapt, like new programs develop instead of just perfecting the programs that it already has. Uh, y- this is this seems a bit more complex than yeah. just that. Yeah, you because you, it, yeah, it's a bird. It's re- more of a biological thing. Re- yeah, re- reading reading about like artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence does have the like a- adaptability to it, where it, it begins to learn. It is it is a slow it is a slow process, but it it does begin to learn. Um, but it has its it's already pre preconceived programming within yeah. it. This is more like it it's trying to actually it, it's trying to establish a program. yeah it's trying to establish an a framework for for adapt like adaptive cores for robotic organisms so so Matt you could call it a TL framework <laughs> is what you're telling me <laughs> is that the name of the program please tell me it's called a TL framework uh no, it, 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 there's no like it, it doesn't specify like a specific a specific program name. It, it these are a bunch of different studies that have been yeah. like peer reviewed by by notable scientists and uh and the main the main specific uh what's it called? Oh, crap, I'm like blinking. Blink, the lead the, no, there there is a. In the scientific community, when when you have, it's when you when you put all all your all the things that you researched inside a at, at the at the end of the document, it's the uh, god damn it citations Cita- yeah c- citations basically uh, the most cited scientist inside inside all of the all, all of these documents is TL. Okay, uh, as like he's realizing, oh, this is more than just. A weird core. It's it's a different style of programming. He starts looking into the programming side of it. Okay. Because that's just he he's a he's a software engineer at heart. Okay, I would like you to roll me a coding in intellect knowledge, please. Oh, okay. Oh I nice. sorry, I my brain was like oh, I can use salvaging on that. I cannot use salvaging on that. <laughs> that is not a mechanics check. <laughs> um Let's, use, let's just use my incredibly high coding. Okay. White dice. Ooh. Yeah, the white dice is being nice today. Um, This is an 8. So it's already a 20. And then I need to add coding on top of it. Which makes it a 26. 26. All right. As you are researching this stuff, you begin to dive into the programming behind a specific a, a adaptive core for sin frames. This takes slightly like, there, there's a lot of like a, a lot of just like text scrolling through through and like skimming things. Uh, because some yeah. people are are giving like different theories of of how, of how this might uh, become like optimized in the future, and then you finally you finally get to the the brass tacks of of how uh, how these things could operate or do operate, and there's specific there's a specific uh, part that it specifies when it comes to biological life forms they tend to have a specific skill set and that that skill set can adapt to to other skill sets later down the line and how how that adaptability works is based off of how how they're talented or the, their genetics at the start when it comes to adaptive cores it to start they have to be a little bit less like like they have to specialize. Ha- yeah a lot more specialized 
and then allow it to branch out even larger based off of the type of core that you you have built and some things aren't going to be accessible to certain cores curious interesting and then you suddenly hear And you hear the guard, uh, 56, looks over at you, and he says, Looks like they have landed, your officer. Thank you. Uh, and Dr. Cal, like, shakes his head a little bit to get out of the zoning in he was in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, he starts walking out. All right, you walk out. As you walk out... You see the pod opens up and stepping out of it is Proto. Oh, he just steps out? He steps out and he looks so of course he does. He looks over at you and then you hear Asla say, Proto, get back inside the the ship and then you see him look at you. Are you all right, creator? Uh, minus a few Diamos Cortets being outside, yes. How about you, Proto? You have fun? I did. And well. you see him looking at the dome and looking past you. Uh, as I, like, Dr. Cal just, like, goes out and he, like, pats Proto. You know, he, like, reaches up his hand to, like, kind of pat Proto on the lower back. He said, next time you can come along. And he pats him on the lower back and gets inside the ship. He stands there. You see Asla walk up and then lo- looks over towards you and then and then she looks over towards Proto and then as she looks at you, she's like, Everything go all right? Well, minus Diamos Cortex showing up near the end, yes. Dimo Cortex is here? They're outside. Shall I hunt them down, creator? Not right now, Proto. I wish to hunt them down, creator. I, I know, Proto, but not right now. Do that next time. You see, he's still staring. At the dome, and then when you look back, you you also look over towards where the you you had exited towards the 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 lift, like the the outside where, where you're at right now, and yep. you see at the door. TL it, himself. No, you still see the guard staring that like standing there, and he's and he's staring outside. He has his visor on. And Something you the- see Proto is almost like it's almost like he's staring at him. Is just, there something wrong, Proto? I'm curious. As I said, next time we come along, you can come along with me. When will that be? Uh, Dr. Cal thinks for a second he's like, eh, probably a week or two. A week Need to or figure two. some things out on you. Yes, probably a week or two. And you hear <coughs> Asla <laughs> clear her throat. Oh. <laughs> Almost like she's trying to get your attention. I look over at Asla. <laughs> Dr. Cal isn't good with being a parent <laughs> or social situations. Am I, retreat, am, I, am I doing the wrong thing with my son? She, my she, baby boy? She looks at like, like you, you, uh, uh, don't you have work to do with G- General Brutal? I do, but uh, 
Do you need to be anywhere right now, Asla? I need to take you back to the base. I look over at Proto one last time and I'm like, Hell, no, I can't set up a meeting now. They're probably all busy. What if I stayed here, creator? Do you, do, you, do you want to stay here, brother? He looks back at you. What better way to learn? Well, judging by the files I read, TL is the main big lead on all of most of the parts you're in. Until we can set up a meeting with him... I guess we won't be back for a bit. He's a fairly busy man, so that might be a while. And I suppose that our mission for Core Command is to hunt down your brother. And we want to stop that as soon as possible. I've heard of some of the things he's done. Not pretty. Are you still answering to that? Never mind. He looks down. I don't think we have money right now, Proto. We have our own money. We can do other things. Well... Perhaps, and he, as he begins to walk back up into the ship, that codex of yours might prove useful. And then he, you didn't tell him about any codex, and he begins to walk over up into the cockpit and sit in, in the co pilot's chair. Has he been sitting in the co pilot's chair most of this time? Uh, when you remember, there didn't seem to be a co pilot's chair before. Inside this wait, pod. Wait, when was there a co-pilot chair? And then when you're looking at it, it, this pod seems a bit different. As the, this isn't the same pod, is it? <laughs> Dr. Cal straight up is like, wait. Oh, I, no. no. Uh, I mean, I... From, you know, when, when that whole situation happened where Proto took par, uh, over the helm, I figured maybe I, I could teach him a few things about piloting, and he, he's a pretty quick learner. Yes, that's part of some of the stuff. Ah, well, that's good. The door closes to the pod, and then uh, as you go up to uh, up into the cockpit, you see it's a little bit of more of an open space where you can sit down inside here, and she goes up to the pilot's chair and begins to get everything situated. And then she says, all right, so we're going to go back to the base. And then once we're back there, you guys can hang out for a bit. And then I'm going to see about getting in contact with the well, the, the central command base over there. Well, the, the southern command base, because that's where, where you guys are stationed. Well, that's good. It gives me some time to research some stuff. Uh, and he kind of takes out the TL frameworks. Pod. The codex. Okay. Uh, and it, you see Proto is like, is like, are we going to have to stay in the laboratory for an extended period of time like we did before? And Asla looks over and is like, oh, uh, it shouldn't be that long. Uh, from, what, from what I hear, there actually has been an update about that. Um, I think an update is actually going to be... A, a larger update is going to be posted pretty soon. That's good to know. Um, and I, I kind of look over at Proto like... I, I forget he has kind of tech vision. Because he know he knows tech, he can kind of just look at tech and remember it's there. I've saw him open doors with his eyes, if I remember correctly, <laughs> <laughs> and turn off turn off uh, 
cameras and stuff too. Right, right. That was important. So yeah, that didn't shock me that he immediately knew the pod about the not the pod. He immediately knew the um, codex. The codex. That that's that's pretty basic. Yeah. Yeah. Are you feeling all right, Proto? I'm feeling optimal. Uh, that's good. We ate a lot. It was enjoyable. My first time having a... What do you, do you call it, Asla? Oh, uh, that was a... Uh, a rib. A ribeye. Ribeye. Yes. I don't know why they call it eye with a rib. Like, you have a rib, but there's no eye inside the rib. So it doesn't make any sense to me. It's not supposed okay, to, here's... Proto. Hey, hey. Hey, Matt, I have a very important question. What? Um, would Dr. Cal know what a ribeye is? Because <laughs> <laughs> if he wouldn't, I'm about to agree so hard with Proto. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and roll me. See, this is what, just roll me a straight intellect this? check. Straight intellect. Oh, straight intellect. Oh, yeah, because I don't have the cooking knowledge yet. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Uh, I I failed um, the roll. Okay, Let's yeah, you see, don't you don't know intellect. what a ribeye that's is. A Thirteen. <laughs> yep. I don't know what a ribeye is. No. Thought the cow like starts just. Wait, why would they call it the rib eye if there's no no eye in the rib? Exactly, creator. I don't understand it either. I tried to ask him, but Wait. he did he did not want to explain it to me. Is it as like, as looks over? Like, it, why isn't there eye in the rib? Like, why would they why would they put eye at the end? Oh, it's a rib. It's just a thing of meat. I I don't know. It's just it's just what they call it. Okay. Strange. Uh, Dr. Cal, Matt, uh, I guess I'm going to have to roll an influence check because Dr. Cal is about to be like, wait, you know, you know what word Dr. Cal is about to use. Oh, great. You, you, go, you, uh, go, go, you, okay, go ahead. You, go ahead. Wait, wait, wait. We're so, just going to so, blank it say, out. Cause it, it's, say what you're going to say. <laughs> say what you're going to say. I want to hear what you're going to say before we roll. Uh, these subpures and their weird expressions. <laughs> So you say that out loud? Is, uh, well, he he tries to catch himself because, you know. Okay, well, then roll me, a, roll me a discipline will check then. Oh, discipline will check? But yeah, I'm guessing it's like, it, it's charm like, instead of will, or is it just will? Well, it's your willpower to hold, to hold back something oh, that no. is offensive. Oh, no. Oh, no, Matt. So uh, 15. Okay. Did I do it? You're able to hold it back from. You're like about to say it, and then you're just like, ah, I should refrain. <laughs> just, just he's like the S slips out. He's like, these, <laughs> he like shuts these his sub mouth. sub races of things. These sub races, <laughs> they're so weird. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Perfect catch, Dr. Cal. Perfect catch. Won't come back to bite you in the butt later. Ugh, these sub races. As, as you guys continue to fl fly back. Uh, Gosh. You are you are sitting there and Asla's like, all right, I'm going to go use the, the, the restroom real quick and I'll be right back. And then she goes and looks over at Proto. It's like, you got this? And Proto's like, of course, I got this. And uh, she stands up and she walks over. She put, she kind of pats you on the shoulder. And, and then uh, she smiles and says, you should be proud. And looks over at Proto and then walks out. Uh, Dr. Cal, uh, like, he, he's basically like holding the two codexes right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he has the one up for research, and then he's, like, typing ideas to the other codex. He's basically using one as a research thing. Suddenly... And then typing on the other one. Suddenly you get a notification on both. And it looks like a like an, an announcement. 
that is sent by the Sidorian Alliance. Sidorian Alliance. Uh, what does it say? It specifies saying, uh, breaking news, the city of Turth Trintrek has been saved by three by three heroes, two hunters from Shikari rule, and one unidentified sin. And it, it says, like, there's been, like, a conflict that occurred, some kind of uh, mass brainwashing from a Newgonian informant from the, de- from the Zelic dynasty. That is... That's why they wanted to sober. Doesn't make sense. Do you uh, do you open it up to see more of it? Yeah, I open it up to see more. You, it opens it up, and as it opens up, you see you begin to read through it. It specifies how the administration had just been voted in, and then within within just weeks. Uh, the people started revolting and going mad and tried to uh, literally literally uh, execute people like just random people who weren't a part of their mind control in the streets but it, this all was thwarted by two hunters that came in uh, one named one, one, one specifically named Arak and another one named Marmaduke Nine. Uh, as as he reads Marmaduke Nine, he just like briefly remarks, "I wonder if it has anything to do with that other." Mar- and then you also see another one that Marmaduke. says, "Uh, that that says Sifra Nis Medin Atiz on it, <laughs> a long name." <laughs> and then in parentheses it says Sai. I mean, really long name. <laughs> <laughs> he like tries to remember what races normally have very long names. Zel- Zel- over at the Zelic Dynasty, their their names are relatively short or pretty straight to the point. Mm-hmm. You got Prober Nine. Works well. You know that that when area. when you are you, you you would know that when when people are inducted into the demo cortex, they forego their name. Um, they they forego their name based off of the the actual rank that they that they're in, and then have to build up into the into the hierarchy. Weird system. He's just like kind of reading over this, and kind of like and glancing up at Proto. You see that it, it also it also reads that the mayor Tamantha Tamantha Trek Trek has given the these three heroes a, a reward, and this has all occurred right before a a major festival that is going that was supposed to bring people together under the new administration and uh, under like this the city. And all that stuff, and then uh, you also read that uh, General Plutel has it is arriving to the city, and will will be man- managing a a new directive that is going to go after the Zelic Di- the Zelic Dynasty and whatever chaos they're brewing. That's smart. Uh, as, as he's like reading this, he kind of walks up to Proto with the uh, TL, the TL codex. Yep. Kind of just sits next to Proto, like on the floor. I don't assume there's another seat near the well, co-pilot the, seat. The, the pilot's chair. <laughs> Oh, he just kind of like loosely like he's like, do they have arms on these chairs? Uh, they do, or you could you could take them off, or like you kind of like 
what, what it, however you can like take the arm off. He kind of okay, takes the arm off and he's sitting sideways and looking at Proto while he's reading this stuff. Do you need something, creator? He's kind of just watching Proto pilot for a bit. <laughs> you see him kind of look, pres- look over towards you and then look back towards towards the, the screen and then look back towards you and then look back towards the screen and then says an announcement popped up didn't it you want me to tell you about it if you would like it seems like you are and wanting something from me I just want to watch you work curious you picked that up really fast it's not much work creator. It's literally just making sure that we are on the correct coordinate path. And no, but that's still that all the systems are difficult for some people. Well, the systems have to operate at, at peak functionality, and that is something that I am good at doing, making sure systems operate at their peak functionality. Makes sense. You're doing a good job proud of you. That codex that you're holding there. Yes, a new one. It'll mostly be my research codex. There's something about it. It appears that any entry I make on this may be supplied to the larger cult. Uh, What's the name for the internet? Textnet. Textnet. Yep. Textnet. Uh, it appears to be brought over to this larger database called the Textnet. I don't know, but it's useful for looking things up. Give me some information on what your core is made out of. Why it's so interesting. Mm. Apparently have something called an adaptive core. Which explains a good chunk of your ability. Suddenly the door opens up and walking inside is Asla is like Did you get the news? Uh, yes. Uh, what news? This... Oh right, I didn't tell you, did I? Uh No, you did uh, not. <laughs> you you see he just kinda glares at you. I think they got distracted, bro. And he kind of, like, gets up and, like, puts the... I just... You're the one with tech vision. I thought you could just, like, see it or what. Can you disable a camera with your eyes? Well, maybe I wanted you to actually read it to me for once. Well, tell me. And he kind of, like, gets up, (laughs) forgets that Proto actually told him (laughs) to read it for him, and, like, puts the armchair back. And uh, Asla begins to walk over towards the chair that you were just sitting in, and she sits in there, and then she looks over and is like, "So, you 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 read it, right?" And she looks over at you, Doctor Cal, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I, I read it. There was something about three two hunters and a sin took down a DMS Tortex informant who was brainwashing a city." What else happened? Uh, General Plutel was Gen- talking about the new yes, division. Yes, Gen- General Plutel is is landing there now, and apparently that there uh, there's some been some updates as well that haven't been actually published or announced. Uh, there was a a crash that occurred recently. What type of crash? A, sh- a ship crashed. A a research like a, a research pod? vessel. Oh, a vessel like a large one. Anyone alive from inside the vessel? Uh, we are not sure. There, the I I've only gotten just information that the, that something crashed. Hmm. Curious. We'll need to be going there shortly, but I'm, I'm going to. If we're still on the same track, 
I'm, I'm taking you back to, back to the laboratory, and then, um, and then I believe it was Operative Micah is going to come and pick you up and take you over to the well, these people that are that that were the ones that helped. Th- these are the people that I believe Pluto specifically said that wanted you to meet them. Ah, well that's good. I guess these might be people we'll work with. Okay. Something like that. Occasionally, yeah. Uh, at least we uh, the from what I have gathered um, I, I've only been able to ask a few questions, but from what I've gathered about this mission is that we're going to use you as, you know, someone who, who has a better understanding of the way the Cortexian informants' minds work, and hopefully we can, uh, take out the supply routes that the... Zelic Dynasty and the Dimo Cortex have out in space. And hopefully this squadron will help us with that as they they prove to be useful in this situation. Taking out this well And that was without um, our resources, actually. That was completely without our resources. So if they, they did have, that on their own? To an, to a certain extent. Um there was a plan that that kind of got screwed up. Apparently, Micah and an, an enforcer got mind controlled as well. So. Oh, that's what explained why Micah wasn't around for a while. It you know, also explained why uh, Commander <laughs> Commander Kurter was so pissed off. <laughs> oh, I forgot. <laughs> came in and shot that guy after asking a few questions. Yeah. Oh, no wonder he was so pissed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. He, got, he got mind control. He got mind freaked. Well, well, Curter didn't get mind controlled. He was pissed off that his 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 officers, right hand. His officers got got mind controlled yeah, true. by a Negonian. That, that would be that's very annoying. It, it almost makes sense that he almost killed imagine, me. Imagine, imagine if he got met me. Yeah, imagine if he did get mind controlled by someone yeah. inside the the Dimo cortex and then came to see you. And oh, yeah, you know that explains why he nearly punted me across the room. Yeah, <laughs> I would be pissed off too. <laughs> Doesn't help that Doctor Cal is a very easy punching bag because he's also a butt to talk to. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure I said some smart ass thing or something as soon as he walked in. No, I was just being his little weird self, where he didn't make any like comforting jokes. He just kind of sat there and talked about what happened. Mm-hmm. Well, as uh, uh, as this happens, you see Asla look up at you and. You see, she she's like, well, um, I'm going to drop you off at your your laboratory, and then when the time comes, Micah should come to you, or even Commander Kurter, and they'll take you to Turth Trintrek to meet with these. Well, with, meet with these. Heroes, I suppose we're calling them. They don't exactly have a squad name. I think they they had just met too, so that's even more of a reason why we're recruiting them. Oh, these are just three random people? Yeah, and they all picked up the slack and fought off an entire city of citizens who had been probed. Dr. Cal bites his tongue in another smart-ass from response about the Demos Cortex. Does he does he bite bite his tongue or do? He... <laughs> oh, <I> will say. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because he he's gonna be like God, these subpures and their weak minds so easily controlled. 
<laughs> oh, that's a six. Uh, 16 plus four, 20. Yeah, you're able to, to bite your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky you got right. you got a high discipline, <laughs> or else, uh, well, you or else all my will. Yeah, <laughs> you gave me a few reasons to have such a high will, though, Matt. I remember all the saves I needed to do. Uh, there's a good reason to have high will, <laughs> especially when you're in the DMOS cortex, the place where pe- your boss literally reads your mind. Ah, uh, but yeah. <laughs> he bites his tongue at that. That's a good way to get shot. <laughs> well, as you uh, as you guys continue with your flight over, uh, the time goes by, and you continue to kind of like read through all the different codexes, like skimming back through each one that you've read, so that it kind of ingrains into your mind all, all the different. Uh, resources that you that you might need to to acquire in order to begin to make your own eventually um, not to mention how hard it would be to assemble these things. yes yeah I mean these are like you ever try looking into how to assemble an Intel processor <laughs> <laughs> those things are ridiculous man things are things are atoms thick. And if there's a single vibration, the entire chip's ruined. Eventually, you get up to the quantum force, and you travel through it. You're not. Are, are you? Are you? Are you going to speak with with quantum? I mean, might as again? well while we're traveling through the quantum. <laughs> force. God damn it! Okay, let me let me uh, get. I, I didn't prepare that. Let me let me get that prepared real quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as you approach the quantum force, religion check. I would like you to roll me a religion check since you are literally trying to communicate with quantum. 12. That's already a 22. 24. All right. As you approach the quantum force, quantum force begins. You fall back under deep into the heart of reality itself and you reach the base island that you've been to several times now it almost feels like you have a deep connection here now and then you see out from the liquid the water ripple says stepping up Cerebral stands there in front of you. Well, trip there was informative. Watch Doesn't... your creation. Closely. I know it's the Reaper. Especially now that I know what's all going on with his core. Not just that. You let him step foot on the platform. Would that be so bad? Not as bad as entering. But he got a glimpse. The question is what did he glimpse? Glimpse the guard, I guess? I need you to unlock the part of him 
that I, take, that I cannot see. You mean unlock the part of him you cannot see? What, what do you expect me to do? You are a resourceful, Dr. Cal. You want, do you want me to try probing a sin? Is that what you want me to do? Either that, or find another way. I am not forcing I... you to do anything. I am only warning you. If I cannot see what lurks behind those doors, even through your eyes, perhaps. Worry what might be in them, don't you? Indeed. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Good. Now, do you have a question for me? Any tips for dealing with my brother? <laughs> He's quite a powerful prober. Tetherer? What is he? I don't know. He's, he's not... The hierarchical not... structure that Montezelic has played, placed for the Nigonian. He believes that it is the closest to path to reaching me. But he has forsaken a part of what I stand for. What would that be? Potential. Not corruption. And as he says this, he looks at you. Do not allow yourself to be consumed. Try my best. Your brother has already, has already lost that battle. And you see him fade away. And as he fades away, you open up your eyes. And you see Proto is sitting across from you. I thought you were in the co-pilot's chair. You were asleep again. Yes, I was talking... To people. To your creator? Yes. Yes, that's the word for it. <sighs> As a lot convinced me that it is okay for you to have that connection to a being that doesn't exactly give you much like you give me. He gives me a few warnings. Though, next warnings. time I go to the old frameworks, I'm debating on whether I take you with me. Again? Still work. It's a lot more of a possibility this time, Proto. And he halfway puts a smirk on. It is maybe dangerous. All right, well, we're here. And he stands up and he goes and walks over towards the the door. Is Asla still in the pod? Asla is still in the pod, yes. Thank you, Asla. Uh, <sighs> she's not in this in the chamber that you're in right now. Oh, Wait, what chamber am I in? I thought I was in the pilot section. Uh, you are you are currently in the the open area where where the actual door to like the the outside door is, is at, and and you're you're basically just just sitting there in, inside a harness. I kind of undo the harness and I go to try to find Asla to say thank you. Okay, you go you go over to a door that you believe is the chamber that she's she's inside, and then you open it. And as the door opens up, you hear Asla saying, All right, General, sounds good. Uh, see you soon. And then you see she hangs up. 
on a codex. Thank you, Asla. Oh, uh, of course, Dr. Cal. Um, so yeah, you, you the, the base is, is outside. You can go straight straight into the laboratory and get, you know, get cracking uh, on whatever you're going to be working on, and then... Did they resupply the um, nutritions? We're going to need those. Yes, yes. Um, here, and then she goes over to a little slot, <laughs> and then she presses onto something, and then and then you see she checks inside. It's like okay, um, give me no, one second. And then you you see she presses onto another panel on the wall, and then it op- uh, opens up into another slot, and then she pulls out what looks like an, an ESB, and then she goes and takes the like a huge pack, like mul- multiple packs of of nutritions, and then she puts them all inside the ESB, and she's like, here you go. Th- thank you. <laughs> that should is... that should last you about a week. Based about off twenty one of... of them, I assume, <laughs> and I just kind of take them with me. It, th- there should be enough for the two of you for for a week. Okay. Let's just hope he doesn't get any hungrier. Just take him out to a- a- an actual dinner, uh, like. Other, I think the the flavor helps him, you know, actually, you know, be satisfied. The nutritions don't provide enough flavor, so he, I, I don't know. I mean, just take him out. Thank you. Take him out. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Asla. Mm-hmm. Trying to, th- uh, Doctor Cal's trying to think if there's anything else he needed to talk with her about. Um. No, I guess that's it. All right, so you head out of the pod. He kind of waves and he, and he starts heading out. You go over towards the the laboratory. You reach the laboratory that you have been working in, or well, had been working in for some time. Yep. And. As you enter inside, you still see that the door hasn't hasn't been fixed inside there. Um, Might as well fix that. <laughs> and we're going to end the session there. Dr. Cal starts figuring out how to repair the door. <laughs> <laughs> we can start in that session with repairing doors. Repairing the door. Proto- Ne- the doors. It's going to be next session. There were multiple doors that we broke, <laughs> Matt. We broke... Specifically, three. I'm pretty sure. It's, it's so. It's going to be next session, and then, the se- and then literally after that is going to be the, the session where you, actually meet, the players, the heroes. That is the, the thirty first. The thirty first. Yeah. Yes. That's Tuesday. But, two weeks. From yes. Thank you all for listening to this, session. Of the doctor, and hopefully you have enjoyed it just as much as I have enjoyed running it. And if death comes to you, may you be reborn in power. And credits. I thank you for listening to the doctor. Be sure to check out the official New Age campaign, now releasing here on the podcast and streaming bi weekly Tuesdays on Twitch. A link will be found in the description of this entry. And if you want to be reborn yourself, you can subscribe as a Chosen to access Chosen Creation and exclusive Codex entries. Until next time, travelers. Be safe. Stay safe. And if death comes to you, may you be reborn in power.